Welcome back to episode two of the Orient Blue 525i E34 Build-It-Yourself project. Let me set this head down and then uh, I'll talk. So if you guys remember, this is the car that I bought without the cylinder head on it because it blew a head gasket. I got all the parts we need to get this head back on. So today, that's what we're doing. We're gonna throw this head on and get this thing running by the end of this episode, hopefully. So I got a lot of parts and tools and stuff over here. I'm gonna show you guys really quick and then let's just get right into it. Okay, so here obviously we have the rebuilt head that I showed you guys. And then we have all the parts that came with the head. Um, Luckily this guy was pretty organized, but not perfectly, so I have, this is going to be a little bit difficult because I have a lot of things here, I have to remember where they go, like just a box of bolts here, I have to know what goes where. I have a pretty good idea, I've torn apart a few M50s, but might struggle in a few sp uh, spots here. I got the M50 timing tools that we need, this is actually a double Vanos kit, which is nicer because it comes with the like the dummy chain tensioners, which you supposedly need for head installation, and you'll see that in a little bit. And then it comes with the Vanos wrench that we need, the cam blocks, the crank pin which to lock the crank, which I don't think we'll even use really. Brand new head bolts, very important there. We got our brand new gasket kit, and then a lot of other miscellaneous stuff, you know, water pump thermostat. Vanos gasket, just stuff that we're going to be replacing. So without further ado, let's get in here. So step one in this whole process is getting this block deck ready for the new head gasket in the head. You see how it looks now, doesn't look very good. So in the world of convoluted car things that everyone will tell you something different, welcome to how do I get my block looking cleaner. This is extremely controversial of a topic. People say anything and everything. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using here this Gordon Combination Sharpening Stone. What this is, is basically a knife sharpener with a coarse side and a fine side, or a fine side and a whatever. Two different uh, grits, basically you want a fine and you want a coarse. This one actually is fine and medium, that should be fine though. Uh, this is basically what we're going to be using to kind of surface the, the block surface a little bit. It's an iron block, we're not going to be taking much material off, we just want it to be clean and smooth. So we're going to use this and some WD-40, and then once we're done with this, we're going to move over to a 400 grit sandpaper for the final touch. And this should come out pretty nice, I've read a few threads on the best way to do this. People say don't use Scotch-Brite, some people use Scotch-Brite, I don't know, I'm going to avoid that for now. starting to come back it looking it's looking pretty good now the last step is the 400 grit sandpaper that I'm just gonna wrap around the block and then we're just gonna make a couple passes same thing wet it with WD-40 and uh, go to town So I got everything prepped, ready to go, the block is ready, and I'm coming over here to set the cam timing, and I noticed this. So I'm going to grab the front of the exhaust cam, or the intake cam, and spin it. What do we notice? The rest of the cam isn't spinning. Are you kidding me? This cam is split in half. I don't know how that happened, I didn't drop the head or anything, It's it's been like this I guess. I don't know if the machine shop over tightened one of the journals. I don't know what could have happened here. Oh, and there I go trying to break the new cam. So here's the cam I grabbed from my shed. I got it all cleaned up and uh, ready to install. So just gonna place her in there. Just start installing the journals. They are numbered. So you got E1, which is going to be our first journal, and then it's 1 through 7, so just keep the numbers in track. 
The torque on these is very small. It's 11 foot pounds. I got a fancy snap-on torque wrench here from Zach so I could install these head bolts properly. So now we're just gonna go along and uh, tighten these down. Cam is in, can't even tell we uh, ever had any issues. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw some oil on this and we are ready to put this cylinder head on the engine. All right, head gasket on. We'll only go on one way. Dry. All right, so first things first, we gotta get the bottom end of TDC. Almost forgot this step. So there's a mark on the timing cover. And then we just gotta rotate it until we see the the O and the T. Alright, it's time to put this head on. So, I got the timing blocks on the cams, so the cams are at TDC as well. I'll show you those, but I got this set up in an interesting spot, the camera, so I don't want to move it. So, bottom ends at TDC, head gaskets in place, dry, dry. Let's get it. Oh, this sucks. This sucks. Holy shit. Oh! Okay, what the hell am I getting stuck on here? Woo! We're gonna have to try again. Holy Oh god. Oh, that hurts. Right? Hopefully we didn't bend any valves. Time to install the head bolts with the washers. We're gonna put them all in by hand, finger tight, and then we will uh, torque them down. It says to lightly lubricate them, so we're gonna do that. I got a little cup of oil here. We will. Just dab them. So the head bolt washers don't actually fit between the cams and the, the trays. So you have to push them in from the, uh, underneath which is proving itself to be rather tedious and obnoxious. Head bolts need to be replaced, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned it, but these are brand new head bolts going in. Okay, now I'm gonna go around, tighten them all by hand, just snug them up, and then we get ready for the torquing. All right, so stage one is 22 foot-pounds, so let's go ahead and start. So I got 90 degrees figured out, so now let's go on here and see, uh, see how she goes which technically should just basically pull it here to here. So let's see how accurate it is. It's very accurate, that is nice. Dude, I know like head bolts are stretch bolts. It feels so weird going, keeping, you know, going because it, it just feels like you're gonna snap them, but you gotta have faith. I'm gonna give myself a break. Then we're gonna get to sequence three. Last sequence, another 90 degrees. This is where things might start to get a little difficult. Oh shit, this is a lot harder. And that's a wrap. All the head bolts are officially torqued down. That was exhausting. Now I'm gonna finish the front two timing cover bolts. You hardly torque them to anything, so just hand tight. And then I'm exhausted, not feeling well, so I'm gonna call it for the night. I'm gonna let this sit like this. 
and tomorrow we will get back at it and we'll get the chains on and the vanos and wrap all this up. So it's actually been a couple days since I installed this cylinder head. You could probably hear it in my voice. Uh, I was actually installing this with like 102 fever. I was super sick, didn't realize it. Been sick the past couple days, but we're better. So bear with me, we're gonna finish this up. I'm gonna try not to talk as much because my voice is absolutely horrible. But now it's time to get this thing all timed up with the chains and all that. So we gotta start getting this primary sprocket on around the chain. So we don't have to worry about this chain falling into the bottom end. And you want the arrow up. And you want these tapped holes to the left of the uh, slotted ports on the, the tensioner or on the sprocket. And with the chain with the arrow up, it pretty much gets you right there. So okay, now what we want is the timing chain dummy tensioner, which we're gonna thread into where the timing chain tensioner goes, and then that should <clears throat> get the chain set up, and then these holes should be perfectly aligned in the middle. So that's how you'll know if you got it all set up right. So I'm gonna tighten up the dummy chain tensioner. Those are centered, there's no slack on the chain. Now we are ready to install the upper rail tensioners right here. I have to go look through the bolts and remember what is for what, so I'll be right back. Okay, upper chain tensioner. I had to loosen the dummy a little bit to get this to actually line up the bolt holes right. Okay, now we gotta install the upper chain tensioner and I'm gonna have to struggle and find the bolts for this because they're all scattered everywhere. So let me go grab those. There's four bolts, three are different sizes. Goes like this. The longest bolt goes through the front and then the two bolts that are the same size drop down through the higher part right here, like so. A short guy goes down in the back here and sits almost flush. These are all tightened to 10 newton meters, which means I'm just gonna go by hand. Okay, now we gotta install the secondary chain here. Okay, it looks like I finally got it, so. These holes are lined up in the middle. These are lined up in the middle. And it said any any bit off and they will be drastically different. So I don't think you have to overthink it if it looks a tiny bit off. The way we're looking at this in general is a bit you know, altered from our angle of our head. So I think we got it nailed. So now full left that way, should be full whatever that way. Full this way, it's full that way. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now we gotta install the hardware here. And we don't wanna torque it, we just want it to be like snugged up. Okay, there we go, so it can move around, but they're all installed. We got the Vanos gasket here, the steel gasket. And I got some RTV on the actual head itself because I feel like that will help. People say this likes to leak. All right, now's the critical part. So we got the front here turned all the way clockwise. And now we want to get the Vanos unit itself onto the studs here. And you want to get it kind of lined up on the uh, sprocket here. You got to help it and then it won't turn anymore. And now what we want is we're going to turn the exhaust sprocket tool clockwise or counterclockwise. <clears throat> and we want to catch the Vanos gear on the first spline that basically, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but as we turn this, we push it in, and it's supposed to catch on the very first one. So let's see if we can do this first try. There we go. And that aids in helping it install. Okay, great.
now we can remove the pin that's holding down the uh, tensioner here. Boom. We are all tensioned up. Plugs back in. So there's the dummy. Now here's our real tensioner with a brand new crush washer. There's a slot in it. You want to make sure you get that around the the guide, which I have here. All right. Real tensioners in. We just got to tighten these nuts now, which I believe to do we're going to have to spin the engine. But the engine's ready to spin. We can take the blocks off there. We got the pin out of the crankshaft. All this is all set up right, so I think we can spin her. And we're gonna spin it a couple times and make sure that each time it returns to TDC. Okay, so now there's the last nut to tighten here. And now everything is tightened. Okay, TDC. TDC appears to be good. Now when you're spinning these engines, since the Vanos is over here, the exhaust cam will sometimes vary, um, which is nothing to be afraid of there. So you can see here, probably hard to see, TDC, cam blocks fit back on. This is after multiple rotations. Like I said, since there's a Vanos, when you spin it around, likely that intake cam will not be lined up right. You could spin it on its own, and then you can get the cam block on and confirm everything is good. So that's what we have confirmed here. Engine is in time. Fantastic. Now, like I said, I'm going to struggle with these exhaust bolts. That's kind of hard to film, so bear with me. I'll come back once we can do everything else. Exhaust manifolds are back on. That was as painful as I thought it would be. Now we gotta get the studs back on for the valve cover, and then let's button up this valve train so we can eliminate getting anything in there while we work over here. So, <clears throat> you guys know the drill, RTV at the seams, at the half moons, and also this machine shop brilliantly decided to stamp the cam caps to remind themselves which was which into the valve cover ceiling surface. So I'm gonna RTV over that, because that's just stupid. I don't know who would do that, but. Okay, and don't forget the spark plugs, wells. Now we gotta go get our grommets and all our nuts. Brand new NGK BKR6 EKs, which is the OEM spec for the M50. So we're popping these in. Now it's coil pack time. We're gonna go ahead and take care of this water pump and the thermostat now. Get these hammered away before we put the intake on and whatnot. There we go. Oh, this water pump was destroyed. Look at this. This thing, I was about to not do it, and then I was like, ah, I'm gonna buy it. It's still plastic, and it's on its way out. This would have literally been a failure waiting to happen. I'm glad I bought this. It's actually broken. Look, the shaft spins without the thing. Oh, that's why, I think this is why the guy blew the head gasket, because I think the water pump failed. I didn't even, I didn't even remember that. He didn't, I forgot what he said. Um, and there's a crack in the blade. So this is why the engine overheated. Oh man, I'm so glad I bought a water pump. I was about to just send it. 
Look, I would have just blown the head gasket all over again. Good thing we did this. Brand new metal impeller, graph unit going in. Okay, so we're upgrading this car to a metal thermostat uh, housing here. Plastic ones are junk. So we got a brand new metal, courtesy of the previous owner, it's very nice. Brand new orange gasket there. Then we got a brand new bear. I think it's a bear. 88 degree thermostat right here. Arrow up. Engine lift bracket going on. Got a nice tool here from the previous owner. Fits on there just perfect. All right, new O-ring on the cam position sensor. Get that in there. New crush washers. Two brand new sensors. The blue one goes on the left, and then this should be a black one for the middle. Which is which, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the wires are kind of in the right spot. There's a blue label on this, and so I'm just gonna hook them back up. But uh, yeah, like I thought, black sensor, blue sensor. Blue on the left, black in the middle, and then on the right is the, the coolant uh, port. There's that one. Now let's get that port in there. Definitely do not want to forget this coolant hose in the back. I almost forgot about it. Okay, up next before the manifold goes on is our ICV hoses. These ones are pretty cracked up. This stupid ASC car hose for the cars with ASC, ASC it's like 50 bucks. Outrageous. Then we got the little boot, the little 90 boot there. And then the plastic little thing that goes into the manifold. Always broken. So let's get the old ones off the ICV. This is the old one, and you can see here around the plastic connector for the intake boot, we are completely split. So that's a nice vacuum leak there. This one I don't even think was cracked, but just a precaution. This one's cheap, so kind of dumb to not replace it. This one itself is actually good. I'll probably keep it as a spare. But this had the plastic connector broken off as they always do. Perfect. Old one. Get this back on the ICV. So I'm going to figure out which fuel line is which and I find a puddle in the back. Come to find out the feed line into the filter there is uh, completely cracked and leaking so that's gonna have to be replaced before we can start this thing that is so bad it's just seeping so this is both the feed to the filter and the exit of the filter both are bad both were leaking so we're gonna do new line new hose clamps so now we come up here and we jump the fuel pump relay and we should be able to find ourselves the feed i hear it oh and there we go all right we are ready to put the intake manifold on Brand new FPR vacuum line. We gotta replace all these seals for the runners. Also got brand new throttle body seal. I just gotta place this. Okay, not too bad. Gotta get the ICV. A little ICV elbow is popped into place. You can kind of hear it when it goes. Trying to get the injectors and the rail in place. So now we can lay in the coil pack wiring. It's 
throttle body time. Oh man, this is exciting. We are we are very close. So now this is where the ASC garbage comes in. I wish I deleted it on this car, but I um I don't want a bunch of you know air codes and stuff, so I'm just gonna let it let the ASC ride. Oh, there's a pipe somewhere, I think. Right here. Yep, easy. Last but not least, the intake boot. Alright, we got our hose clamps. ASC hose down here. Gotta hook the math up. And that's it. Now, the moment of truth. So obviously I still have to put the uh, clutch fan on, fill the cooling system, and put the hoses on. But before I put a bunch of coolant in this thing, I want to make sure it runs. I want to make sure it starts because we, we just redid most of this engine. So there's a lot at stake here. Come on. Come to life. Uh, I say let's get the coin system hooked up, drain the oil, put fresh oil in it, and uh, then, you know, bleed it, make sure it gets the temp, and we should hear the valve train quiet down, and uh, yeah. Hey, successful first start, that's sick. Okay, I got brand new upper and lower coolant hoses, radiator hoses. Oh yeah, it's milkshake. Woof, that's nasty. This is a chocolatey brown oil filter, full of water. You can see there on the top. Yeah, this is not what oil looks like. Oil, when it's dirty, is black. When it's clean, it's very light, clear brown. This is chocolate brown. This is blown head gasket brown, so. I got the oil filter in, all the new O-rings and stuff. Time to fill this baby up. 10W40, Castro high mileage, you already know the drill. All right, now that our oil is changed, or I guess I should just say our water is changed, um, time to fill this thing up with cool. Okay, we're coming out the bleeder. So fill up a little bit more to push more bubbles out. I think the blood sounds like it's quieting down a little bit. So uh, now I think the next step is clean up. And then tomorrow in the daylight, pull this thing out and uh, what I say about that tick, listen to this bad boy. Man, never ever doubt an M50. These things love to tick for no reason when they're sitting, when they're fresh. This thing's quiet as can be right now. Come over here and run this bad boy. All you gotta do is rev it up a little bit and that tick will go away right away. This thing runs good, man. It's not leaking anything, it's not overheating. I'd say this is a job well done. And so, we end this install that was taken apart from the previous owner with only four bolts left. And they match. So, I'm not sure where on this engine I'm missing these two pairs, but they're not internal components and everything's operating so not really too worried about them and there we have it that is the conclusion of the m50 head replacement so i've been driving the car past couple days never got the chance to film going out of town so i just wanted to conclude this video here if you made it this far to this very long video thank you very much i appreciate you guys i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one peace